The rains certainly do bring a lot of joy to the bush for all animals. And here, I have a little gift. He is very, very well hidden. But he looks great. Hopefully he'll show himself a little clearer as we sit here. But it is a Tingana, everyone. Tingana is back on Juma. It's been weeks since we've seen him. And he looks great. Haven't seen if he's scent marking. Didn't hear him sawing. So we're not really sure if whether he's still claiming this area as his territory. But the mere fact that he's here tells us that he feels strong. And he feels very able to be here in Juma without feeling too much of a threat. Tatingana has been our dominant male left here for a long, long time. He's estimated to be born in 2006. That was when he was first seen. We don't really know his parents. And he has been a firm favorite of us here. Always enjoy seeing him. Such a character. Such a large leopard. We've been seeing a lot of the females. But it's been a while since we had Tingana. A really beautiful big male leopard. <laughs> I, I wonder if you just if you just caught me talking about how beautiful Tingana's shoulder blades were. I was actually singing about it. Tingana and his beautiful shoulder blades and telling Theo if you want to see shoulder blades. This is the one you want to look like, look at. I'm well, sorry about the Mara guys, but again, we're lucky to have Tingana and we have a little bit of alone time before we have to leave. And we got a really nice view. So this is awesome. Really, really nice. Now oh, he's curling up in a bit of a ball, as he tends to do. And there's a nice patch of sun there too. So he's just enjoying himself. There's nothing I can tell you about Tingana except the fact that he's a legend. He is a large leopard, I would probably put him at about 90 kgs or so. If I was being conservative, between 80 and 90. He's a big leopard. Average male leopard, you're looking hmm, about maybe 60 to 70. Females are more in the realm of the 40s kgs. Those are. So he's, he's big. He's in charge, and like I said, it's so nice to see him because we've just not been fortunate with sightings with him of late. Just gorgeous, like, so now, I, like I said, we have a little bit of time with him, and we may have to leave soon. I keep telling you that, just in case when I do leave, you understand why, but I'll try and see. I've managed to get a nice view of Tingala and he's now sitting up quite lovely Lee. Still feeling a little bit lazy. He kind of gave us a ring around the Gwari bush and it ended up very close to where we originally found him. Sometimes, depending on how animals have been with vehicles in the recent past. So maybe he was he didn't have a nice incident this morning or yesterday or something like that. He can try to avoid vehicles just because he doesn't like them very much. So that's why we're quite far away from him at the moment so that he can he can be relaxed and and will not feel threatened by us at all. So it's important to give them space. And if the animal comes closest to you, and that's very lucky for you or for us. And sometimes we can get lucky with our positioning or where we manage to find the animal. But it's always important to give the animal 
the freedom to move around. Chantal, would you like to know if these predators are immune to snake bites? They are not. They have... They, they are not immune to snake bites. So, if a snake bites them, it's definitely not pleasant. And if the venom is extremely toxic, it can kill them. Now, Tingana here has been seen with a python kill twice. But pythons, as you know, do not, are not venomous. But he's managed to tackle a python to death twice. At least twice that I've seen. Which is quite something. Now, there are mammals that are immune to some extent to venom. And that comes from the fact that venom has is a very, very specific type of molecule and it kind of latches onto your cells and then is able to disable them or um, interfere with your your blood coagulating there we go gosh that word took a lot to come out your blood coagulation or whether they're messing around with um, the electric wiring in your body whatever it is it latches onto your cell to be able to do that but sometimes if the it's kind of like a lock and key system so if the particular the particular lock shape is a little bit off then that key of the venom will not be able to attach and animals such as squirrels mongoose um, honey badgers their specific points on their cells that venom would attach to, some of them, but not all of them, some of those points are rounded or oddly shaped so that the venom cannot attach to the molecule, cannot attach, and does not affect them as badly. That does not mean that it doesn't affect them at all, because only a few of these, of these structures on the outside of the cell are differently formed. But some still are, so some will be receptive to the venom. But because the entire network of cells is not receptive, they're able to recover. But they will still feel some effects, which can affect how they metabolize and things like that. And you'll often see that they might go into a deep sleep during the recovery process after they've been bitten by a snake. But for animals like these, no such defense.